Huh. Like that. I, like, I feel like, um, like my dad, he's like addicted to crunch. He's got to have like some form of like a chip, some form of a nut, some type of crunch. I'm definitely addicted to the fizz. I need a you fizz. Like fizz? You need a fizz? I've just started that. Yeah. I've just like lately, that. it's been mineral water. Yeah. Like it, when I'm in my unhealthy state, it's soda. So I wonder if we're on the topic of marketing, how much of that goes into the commercials, like the the sound uh, effects. That's probably a lot. Subconscious. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the mmm on like a snack. Have you noticed that Coca Cola has stopped advertising just their drink alone, but they've now. They're, they're, the way in which I perceive them advertising is that they are creating like something that goes along with food. So the way the oh, commercial starts, yeah. it's all about a burger or being at a picnic table or a big pizza. And everybody's just like it gathering around and having this. fun. And they're yeah. like, enjoy it with a Coke. So they could flipped it where it's not all about Coke. It's just something that's a complimentary. I have noticed that. That is interesting. Yeah. The worst are, and I think that like this hit the stride like in the mid two thousands, where the crazier you do, the the crazier it is, the more people remember it. But they oftentimes would happen, and then we talked about this in like some marketing classes. Then I graduated, and I haven't. I just talked about it with random people, but I love commercials. That's why I got the marketing degree. Like I was. Well, your of, undergrad was business, and then you. My undergrad was marketing. Oh, and then your a, graduate was marketing. My graduate was international business, but yeah, we studied like macroeconomics and all the other countries and how the United States and just what they do to get the most out of their GDPR, or, you know? Gross domestic. GDP, sorry. G- that's the GDPR. Gross domestic uh, product. product, yeah. Unique. GDP, yep. And So basically how much? It was like a, my degree was like a consortium of like, some people say like they have an MBA and they do an emphasis and stuff like that, like an MBA with emphasis in accounting or an MBA and emphasis in marketing. Or it said international business, but really it was kind of like um, a business degree on steroids because they we had to do an accounting feature, we had to do finance. We didn't take a specific marketing class, but we had to take specific economic classes, and then we had to do like quantitative methods and like regression analysis and like. Was it hard? It was difficult, <laughs> man. It was difficult. It was a lot more math than I use, right? Ah. But I was always attracted to why countries do certain things. Like, I was always interested in, like, tariffs and trades. Uh-huh. Like, for instance, like to, at a, a United States level, right, what do you think as if Texas was to, like, divide itself away from the United States, what would their, like, biggest products that they would sell, right? Cowboy <laughs> boots. <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> Ali G. <laughs> Uh, but beef. it would be beef, right? Do you think the same would exist in Washington State? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Apples. man. Yeah. Or coffee. Oh, oh, yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. Corn. Corn. So you think about that on a macro scale, right? Okay. China sells rice to um, all other countries in the world. So is India, right? And China's um, area of producing rice is shrinking because their population is growing. And so that's why they have high rices, right? Another something that's like interesting is because China's always been big in that trade, and so is India. Uh, you think they would hold it for forever, but Brazil has recently gotten into the rice game, and they started competing on a scale. And so all ah. this trade has gone on since the 1700s, like those spice boats and all that stuff. And so huh. the effects of all that is what I loved about the NBA. But the marketing stuff was cool because my favorite class was consumer behavior, why people make decisions that they do, oh, and it's like commercials topic. compel people, right? So, for instance, in like the mid two thousands, when people ran commercials, it was like all about drawing attention to the screen, and then you had like a little small excerpt about you'd remember the commercial, you'd tell your friend about the commercial, and be like, "Yeah, but what's the product?" He's like, "I'll remember," <laughs> <laughs> and that's I feel like that's still kind of a trend, but that really you know picked up in the mid two thousands, and I don't know why. But like, I was trying to think of a commercial I've seen like that. Like Old Spice is like a I big have. time. Oh, yeah. You, know, you that... find somebody on a beach, and then like the horse is running, and then the <laughs> horse's legs don't look the right, and then all of a sudden they're not on a beach. And, and you're yeah, like, what? That, yeah, that's, that, I think that. It has nothing to do with, with the one. benefit of the product. It just has everything to do with the attention. Geico is really good at it. Exactly. A lot. Yeah. I, I think that I would say those type of commercials are brand building versus direct sales where like uh, 
you're trying to get someone to buy the product immediately, you would be talking about the product. I would wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. It's like, um, it, it tries to t it tr pulls on the emotional ties of something like, hey, if I buy Geico, I'm kind of like, it's hipper. It's, it's. You trust Geico after seeing some goofy gecko talking about just whatever, or some, just like, Talking about nothing related to insurance, and then at the end, like, oh, Geico can save you money on insurance. Fifteen percent, fifteen minutes can save you fifteen percent. They coined that term. 